What's up everybody, James Bichelle here, and I'm back at you with another video. So we're here. The first episode of Season 6 has aired. It was entitled, The Red Woman, and this is my first ever review of the show since I started my channel. And let me uh, just air a disclaimer. This will be a spoiler-heavy review, so if you haven't seen the episode, go watch it. Come back and tell me what you think. That being said, let's get into it. Now, I'm not going to do a frame-by-frame -frame synopsis, but I will hit up the main points from, you know, start to finish. So the episode starts with a shot of Jon Snow dead in the snow, and we can hear a ghost howling in the background. We see Davos, and another random Night's Watchman, carry his body inside. We then see Alistair Thorne, Ollie and the Night's Watch commanders take credit for the death of Jon Snow. Thorne says Jon was a traitor due to his dealings with the Wildlings, and what, is, and what was done had to be done. After some great dialogue from Davos, the loyal Black Brothers ponder their next move. Davos essentially says that the Wildlings will avenge Jon Snow in a roundabout way. And Ed says he'll be back in the morning as it is presumed that he will gather the Wildlings to come back and exact revenge against the stabbers of Jon Snow. Next we get a scene of Ramsay lamenting the death of his Suedo girlfriend Miranda. Of course the lament is short-lived as he says to feed her body to the hounds. Classic Ramsey. After that uplifting scene, we get a conversation between Roos and Ramsey. Roos essentially says Ramsey is dumb, is kind of what he said. Uh, he played his game and screwed up. He lost Sansa, who is the key for the Boltons to get the support of the other Northern Lords. And he also lost Theon. Ramsey tells Roos that he has men looking for the pair as they speak. Which is a perfect segue, as next we see Theon and Ramsey running through the woods. Uh, without any injuries, mind you, uh, despite jumping off the top of Winterfell's walls last season. Uh, the pair stumble upon a frigid creek. The two superheroes then proceed to cross said creek without suffering any ill effects of wading into nearly frozen water. But I digress. Uh, we see the Bolton men catch up to Theon and Sansa, and Theon is willing to sacrifice himself in order to save Sansa. Uh, however, Sansa doesn't really run, and the dogs find her. Uh, it seems all is lost until Brienne and Pod came out of nowhere and saved the day. After all, the Bolton men are slain, Sansa knights Brienne. Uh, I personally thought the fighting scene was solid. Uh, I did think the knighting was, personally, I thought it was a little cheesy. Uh, but that being said, I, you know, I thought it was one of the stronger scenes of the episode. And it was kind of cool seeing Theon, you know, his character progress a little bit. And him being a little bit more on the heroic side. Next up, we get King's Landing. We see an excited Cersei waiting in the harbor to see her daughter, Marcella. She, of course, sees Jamie at the bow of the boat with a body, and her excitement turns to heartbreak. Her and Jamie then converse, and the gist of their conversation is that uh, they will make their enemies pay. Uh, I personally was hoping that Cersei would berate Jamie, and there, you know, that would it would lead to a conflict that would accelerate Jamie's character arc essentially. Uh, you know, have him start to separate from Cersei so he could start growing in as an individual. Uh, you know, we still might get that because, I mean, I, I think we will get that because he is going to be going to the Riverlands, we assume anyway. Um, that being said, I must, you know, I must commend Nina Heedy's acting in the scene. She did a great job conveying sorrow. Uh, I found it very believable. Uh, she's a great actress. Uh, we then see a conversation between the High Sparrow and Marjorie Tyrell. Um, I believe she'll, you know, I believe she'll be brainwashed by the Faith at some point this season. And the scene was just a precursor to that. Moving on, we get to Dorne. I will say this about Dorne. What happened in Dorne was very unpredictable, and the rest of the episode was kind of paint by numbers, but um, it was pretty predictable. But Dorne, on the other hand, uh, I mean, holy shit, I did not see that coming. Of course, we see Duran betrayed by Ilaria Sand after Tyene is able to kill Arya Hota, one of the greatest fighters in the land, with a two-inch dirk. I know people have said the blade could have been poisoned, but damn, that's some fast-acting poison. And we see Elaria kill Duran, the Prince of Dorne. We then go to the boat where Tristane is. I, I believe they're docked at King's Landing is what it looked like. Uh, which begs the question, how did the Sand Snakes get on the boat after the death of Marcella? Uh, the boat was already off in the sea when Marcella died. Uh, but did the boat like dock again? Just so the Sand Snakes can board secretly and they leave? Uh, I was confused by the ordeal, but regardless, uh, the Sand Snakes are there. Uh, we see them arguing on who is going to kill Tristane, essentially. And during their conversation, Obara spears him through the face, and that's essentially the end of the Martells. 
Rip Martells. Personally, the scene took me out of the episode for a little bit. It was just really crazy, and, you know, it's one of those things where being a reader of, the, of Song of Ice and Fire series really hinders some aspects of watching the show. I, I mean, I still love the show, mind you. Uh, but I know, like, show watchers were cool with the scene, and that's perfectly fine. You know, it's just me personally knowing that Doran wouldn't have fallen for Alaria's plot and Area Hotel wouldn't have gone out like that. That just took me out a little bit. But, you know, that being said, I, I am interested to see where the plot goes. It's such a diversion from the books that I'm in the dark when it comes to Doran, and... You know, that's an interesting proposition. That being said, let's move on. Next, we get to Marine, and we see Tyrion and Varys conversing on the streets of Marine. Uh, I, le I love these two characters, but this scene for me was, you know, a tad bit boring. Uh, the most important thing that occurs in the scene, however, is when they get to the harbor, and we see their ships have been destroyed. Now, what doesn't make sense to me is who burned Danny's boats. Was it the Sons of the Harpy? Um... Why would they burn the boats, you know, when they wanted to leave? <laughs> I thought that was kind of the point of what they were doing. Um, but, you know, hopefully we get more uh, information on that in the next episode uh, and get some development in that plot. Um, I, I believe, you know, I personally believe that Yara Greyjoy will be giving, she'll be given Victarion's role in the book. Uh, and for those who don't know what that is, essentially, you know, he's, uh, you know, given the task by Euron, to bring Danny back uh, so Euron can marry her. And of course, Victorion, you know, he wants to undermine his brother and do it himself. I don't know if Yara will do that, but I think, you know, with the pictures from the trailer where we saw uh, a woman sitting on Yara's lap and they're kissing or whatever, we saw that um, that woman had a Valentin slave tattoo uh, on her face. And um, so people have made the inference that perhaps she's on her way to Marine and she's been given Victorion's plot. I believe it. Um, and I believe that's gonna happen. Now my question is, why did they give Danny the ninety-three ships in the first place just to burn them? Is was it was it kind of like a you know, just a just an error on their part because they didn't you know they wanted to give Yara something to do, so they went ahead with that plot. But I digress. Speaking of Danny, we see uh, Jora and Dario um, at the at the place in the Dothraki Sea where Danny was snatched up by the Dothraki. Uh, I found the conversation interesting. I believe there was some foreshadowing in their dialogue, especially when Dario says that he sees himself possibly, you know, being like Jorah when he gets old. Uh, because they're talking about Danny and how she doesn't reciprocate, at, you know, their love. And Jorah replies, if you get old. Uh, I predicted in a previous video that Dario is behind the harpy and Jorah will kill him, and I kind of, you know, I'm sticking to it after that dialogue. Uh, so yes, predictably they end up finding Danny's ring, and we get to the Danny scene. We see Danny being treated pretty poorly by the Dothraki. They make some lewd comments and say some derogatory things about her, not knowing, of course, that she speaks Dothraki. Uh, she ends up getting to the tent of Kal Morrow. Uh, once again, the uh, the other Dothraki are talking mad shit, not knowing how well versed she is in Dothraki. Eventually, it is revealed after Morrow said he was going to take her that night without her consent that she does indeed speak Dothraki, and that she is the former Khaleesi of Khal Drogo. We see Morrow back off, and say no one will touch her. Of course, this backfires, as she says to take her back to Marine, and she will give them 1,000 horses. Morrow ends up saying, no, we must take you to Vase Dothrak, so you can live as all other Khaleesi widows do, locked up in the Doth Kaleen. This was all pretty predictable, and I believe that um, when they get to Vase Dothrak, Drogon will show up, Roast some dudes, Danny will mount him, and essentially the Dothraki will bend the knee because they are a riding culture. She can ride a dragon, and they, you know, they value strength, and what's stronger than Drogon. They will end up heading to Marine, and she will have a Dothraki horde in her army once again. That's just a prediction. Next up, we see Arya in Bravos. She is blind in the street, begging for coin. And we see the Waif come up to her and beat her up with a stick. We can assume this will be a daily thing until Arya will be able to counter her attack, which she eventually will. Uh, that's essentially my analysis for this Arya scene. Uh, there really wasn't much to take from it, but, you know, hopefully we get more development on Arya's end throughout this season. We are now finally at the end scene of this episode. First, we see Alistair Thorne and company go to the room where Davos, Ghost, and the other loyal black brothers are locked up with Jon's body. They demand to be let in. 
Thorn states that the brothers will not be reprimanded if they lay down their arms, and that Thorn will let Davos go south if they give up Jon's body. Davos, uh, who is, in my opinion, the star of this episode, uh, then demands that they give him some mutton first. We then, of course, get to the big shocker of the episode. It's finally revealed that Mel is glamoured by the ruby she wears, after all, and that she is old as shit. This, of course, has been theorized for a long time, and in the inside the episode, uh, you know, on uh, HBO's YouTube channel after the show, it was revealed that Mel is centuries old. So this is, you know, a very interesting development. Uh, there's been theories that she is the daughter of uh, Blood Raven and Shira Seastar, but if she's centuries old, I believe I heard specifically like 300 years old, um, I think you can debunk that. So color me intrigued, you know, I, I definitely hope we get story of her origins. Um, it's like one thing now that I'm looking forward to the most, and I'm interested to see where her character goes. So that was the episode in a nutshell. In terms of a rating... I thought half the episode was great. I love the stuff in the North. Davos was awesome. The male reveal was cool. Uh, I enjoyed the Jorah and Dario foreshadowing, um, and I enjoyed the Sansa, Theon, Brienne scene. The rest of the episode was not as strong for me. Dorne I did not enjoy, though I am somewhat intrigued about where that storyline is going. And I felt the rest of the episode was just okay. Uh, so that being said, I will score this episode 6 out of 10. Of course, it's the first episode of the season, so there's a lot of setup. Uh, I'm definitely intrigued with a few of the storylines, like I said, and, you know, I'm interested to see where it goes. So that being said, if you like this video, hit that like button, share this video on social media, and subscribe. Until next time, everybody. Adios.